Joe. <clears throat> How did everybody feel when they heard the news last night? Because it was like, it's been dragged out, hasn't it? Like, last week was just getting... It, it's been yeah. it, it's been dragged out, and al although it seems to have been going that way for a long time, right from the start, I always thought, no, something's going to happen at the last minute. Like, mm. in, in, in our own UK 2019 general election, when, before the election, Tory candidates Johnson and his crew were being hounded from pillar to post everywhere they went. They were jeered at, booed at, chased away. Johnson wouldn't interview with Andrew Neely, hid in a cupboard to avoid Piers Morgan, but... I realise with hindsight, they always had that little smirk on their faces, that little, you know, the fix is in, the deal is done. Mm. And I was just dreading that, that something like that would suddenly be pulled out of the cupboard for Trump. But no, it just carried on relentlessly, yeah. throwing out obviously his friends, his former friends are running for cover. Yeah. Plenty of people who worked in his administration <clears throat> have gone to prison. Um, I think a few a few more of them will see the inside of the jails. So. My, one of my favourite things about the election this week was watching footage on Twitter of a bunch of um, like Trump supporters outside a polling station chanting, stop the count, stop the count. And then mm. I scrolled down my Twitter feed and a few tweets later, there was Trump supporters in another state outside another polling station chanting, count the votes, count the votes. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, can you make your minds up please lads? Mm. Uh, right, well, just just before all of our listeners tune away because they think they've got the wrong podcast, uh, <laughs> welcome back, listeners, to uh, Tales from the Twenty Side, uh, Pathfinder Second Edition Let's Play podcast. Uh, my name is Dom, and I am your games master for this game and uh, many others on this channel. And I'm joined by our regular cast members of Mr. Stu Jackson. Hello! Mr. Neil Kelly. Hello! And Mr. Darren Mifuchi. Hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, obviously, as, as you can probably tell, uh, we're all uh, quite jubilant at the, the, the rather big news uh, that came out uh, came out last night. Uh, if you've been living under a rock, um, the big orange what's it is no more in the White House, and uh, the world has restored at least a tiny bit of sanity. Now, uh, we, we, we don't usually come out this with, with our political hearts this much on our sleeves, so it's quite possible we have uh, many listeners who, uh, who who support the other side and who are, are rapidly turning off. There you go. Oh, that's possible. Oh. But Trump did yeah. roll a critical fail, so... Yeah, you know. he did. He did. <laughs> critical fumble. Uh. But after a series of critical fumbles, a critical fail... And now he's getting uh, 2d8 damage to the bollocks. <laughs> yeah, I'm, See, but I'm sure we might have listeners that are, are, are upset by the news, but I'm I'm quite happy to see him gone, to be fair. Mm. Well, I, th I, th I, think, I think for me, are. the most powerful reaction I've seen so far, um, I think there was an American news anchor who was asked how he felt about, 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 about it. And basically he came out and said, it's easier to be a dad today. You know, I, I can tell my kids that character matters, and that that, that honesty matters and, and integrity matters, and that's I, I found that's, that really quite powerful. Yeah, and I oh, think it'll it. have um, it'll have reverberations over here. Um, I saw a little clip where Joe Biden was a, was accosted by a journalist who said, "Have you got a few words to say to the BBC?" And he said, "The BBC, I'm Irish." So that, that should send a shiver down Johnson's spine. All the things he and his <laughs> yeah. cronies have said about, oh, we'll, we'll force Ireland to leave the EU with us, or we'll take back Ireland, oh, will you? Yes. Yeah, it was, it was Van, Van Jones that said that about, it's a lot easier to be a, a dad today. Yeah, I, I, Ooh, I, 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 I found that a very, very raw, very real reaction to, to the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I quite liked, I enjoyed Biden's speech. I, I liked the part where he said, I don't, see red states i don't see blue states i just see the united states i thought that was quite cool yeah mm. but but yeah, you know, the honesty line. in office i mean the reason we've got boris johnson is because we let tony blair lie and get away with it and yeah. the reason the americans had trump was because they let clinton lie and get away with it you know yeah. it's it's it these <laughs> they, they really were the thin end of the wedge and of course as well first female black vice president Absolutely, yes. I think big um, news. Big news. I think, Daughter I think, of immigrants. I, I think behind the veneer of small C conservative neoliberalism that that Biden seems to embody, um, there's actually quite a radical agenda. 
and there's mm. quite some some quite progressive elements. I'm I'm really curious to see how this will have the knock-on effect to us over Brexit. Mm. Because well, Biden's yeah. position is completely different from Trump's. Oh yeah, I mean it's become clear that that Johnson's plans were completely reliant on Trump being in the in the White House. That in I mean, all his negotiations, or so-called negotiations with the with the EU, it was always "Ya yeah, boo sucks." I'm going to hang tough because I've got my big buddy behind me, and we're going to have a great deal with the US. Well, suddenly that's that's all been swept away. At the and same he's just time, been left though, on his own. at the same time, though, like they've had four years to sort it out. What do you really think they're going to get done in two months? Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, they've never. I mean, I remember on the day of the, of the referendum result. And um, Boris Johnson was, I, I don't know if it was Jeremy Paxman or someone, someone stopped Boris Johnson and said, well, so you've won. And he, he didn't look pleased to have won. He said, so um, what's the plan? And he said, oh, well, there is no plan. And Paxman, whoever it was, said, what? No plan? No, what do you mean, no plan? And Johnson pointed at number 10 Downstreet. He said, well, they're the ones who should have been making a plan. They should have been, yeah. mm. and four years on, still no plan. On, on the on the on the subject of half baked plans that may or may not have consequences down the line, shall we bring ourselves back into our game, folks? <laughs> nice. yeah. it's, it's probably about time. Yes. <laughs> I was going to mention something about rolling for diplomacy. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, all right. Um, so, bringing us back into the game, uh, when last we left off, our adventurers. Uh, Brother Amos, uh, Alwyn Templeton and Otto von Niederschläger uh, have been continuing their adventure in the snowy land of Irison. Um, you had left the town of Waldsby, uh, pursued uh, by a bear. No, but pursued by the town <laughs> guard. Um, and then you made your way back into, into the settlement uh, to retrieve Alwyn's wolf, uh, Chardonnay, who had been left behind to have some armour oh. fitted. Um, you then made your way back into the forest uh, without drawing the notice of any of the remaining uh, Pale Tower guards and you began to navigate your way uh, towards the Pale Tower itself uh, however rather than use use <coughs> use the road you felt perhaps it would be a good idea maybe maybe to try and stay out of sight and keep to the trees a bit um, this this, this worked in some ways you, you didn't draw the attention of any of of the guardsmen, uh, but you also managed to get yourselves a little bit lost in the forest, having gone a little way away from the town of Waldsby. And uh, as you were pondering what to do next, you were accosted by um, a black winged shape, uh, calling itself Lytle and uh, asking to trade um, some of the various items you had in exchange for leading you out of the forest. Um, Sorry, I, I you... thought he was offering to exchange various items that we had in exchange for various items that he'd stolen from us. Well, she... she <laughs> <laughs> that was the deal. That's why that we was, had to kill him. That was afterwards. <laughs> that was afterwards. Um, but yes, uh, you... You tentatively began to strike a deal with this creature, only to have uh, it take some something from you. Um, and you realising that this was quite an important object, one of the keys to Baba Yaga's dancing hut, uh, you gave chase. You found uh, the, the creature's nest, and you, after, after a breakdown of, of negotiations, you ended up in a battle with the creature, and uh, that ended with the being known as Lytle uh, lying dead in the snow. Uh, you recovered the item that uh, Lytle had taken from you, as well as a couple of other things uh, that Lytle had about her person, and you set back off into the forest. Um, so, uh, adventurers, what would you like to do? They simply set off back into the forest. Yes, we need to go east. East, to go yes, east, um, east towards the Pale Tower. Can, can yes, we see the Pale Tower from wrong. here? Uh, yes, the mist, uh, the mist has cleared slightly from where you are, and you can just make out, make out the shape of it looming a little bit above the tree line. Um, before we do, though, I, do you know what, Let, let's not get into that moral debate again about Lytle, but um, I, think, I think let's have a moment. Uh, Alwyn would like to bury Lytle. Uh, sure oh, really? you can. Oh, really? You can absolutely do that. You can take you take a few minutes uh, to dig. Ah, hide um, the evidence. Yes, of course. Yes, that's not <laughs> what I'm thinking. Yes. Good thinking. 
And you take a few minutes to dig <laughs> um, a sort of grave of sorts near, near near the tree that she was using as a home. Um, and over the course of about half an hour, you do um, you do manage to bury the corpse of uh, of the slain witch crow. A shallow grave. So it was always uh, going to end this way, Lytle. Um, a shallow, unmarked grave in the woods. Would like to say a few words over the grave uh, in whatever Caden Kalian oh. um, tradition there would be, and uh, take a swig from the stein and have a little dance. Of not have a little. No, that's not appropriate. <laughs> Well, I think I don't so. think this. I don't think Lytle was a bad creature. That's you don't. I don't think Lytle no. was a piece of shit. I think Lytle <laughs> was maybe, maybe made some poor choices. <laughs> but um, yes, um, we'll offer the Stein for a swig to the others. And ah uh, oh, yes, the never-ending Stein. The never-ending Stein. The never-ending we'll Stein. one out for Lytle as well. As it's never ending, yes, it doesn't cost us anything. Uh, <laughs> you do so, um, and having taken a few minutes to kind of pay your respect to, the t- respect to this creature that you'd killed, um, you do find yourself pouring out uh, a slop of a slop of booze from from the bottomless stein that you now have, Alwyn. Mm. Right. Um, and yeah, with with that little ceremony completed, uh, I'm guessing you're heading back into the forest. Is that correct? How, how much how much daylight yeah. do we have left? Uh, oh, plenty. At this point, it's probably only it's, it's probably still about midday. Ah, a good morning's work. It's it's really Otto. We need a word. <laughs> <sighs> yes, I. There'll be times I know when you know lives have to be taken, but but we don't have to be glad about it. That's not a... I don't know. I just feel particularly glad about this one. I know it's wrong, <laughs> and I know it's, and I'm the first to admit it. Well, no, no well, you're, you're not. not. <laughs> no, no, <but> now <laughs> that you pointed it out to me, I, I will be the the second or third. Or the, how many of us? Yes. Four of us. There will be the fourth one to admit it, because I think even Chardonnay knew I was. Uh, All right, um, Brother Amos. What what do you have to say about it? As you know, you're a you're a religious man, and, and I've always you've always been very reticent about which god you. you the follow. bird was a thief. Well, the, the, well yes, and paid the price, and attacked and, and did and, she? and you killed her. <laughs> it was you. I oh, thought she myself. only attacked in self defence. Attacked in self-defense. Well, mm. yes, yeah, she she responded to an attack, didn't she? Preemptive self-defense. Well, no, no, no. We we well, not me, but let's just say I won't lose any sleep over it. Anticipatory retaliation. Yes. I'd love to hear about which god you follow at some point, Amos. Yes, we'll Brother discuss Amos. that one day, perhaps. I help it's a wrathful god. He's well, a god Abadar with incredibly or... moral, flexible morals. Oh, uh, okay. I, I can roll with that too. Yes. Let's see, Abadar or Asmodeus or, yes, something. Mm, right. Okay. Onwards and across. And backwards again. All right. Uh, so you make your way uh, back into the forest. Uh, sort of heading east in the direction of the Pale Tower, um, and uh, you're you're trudging through uh, through the heavy snow for for quite some time. Um, remind me, did, did did you pick up additional cloaks and things from uh, from Aldby? Um, I don't think so. No, I don't recall doing. We already had uh, the heavy cloaks mm. from elsewhere be- from before we came through the portal. We did have heavy winter cloaks. We grabbed snowshoes. We did have snowshoes. I've got snowshoes and a cold weather cloak. Oh mm. yes, that's right. Because I think as part of the stuff you were given by Nadia, you were given um, some some thick cloaks as well. 
But the cold weather cloaks came from the shop in Heldron. Um, two of them did. The third one came from Ted Notton's. Well, the, the the little huts around Ted Notton's area. We fashioned one out of furs. Mm-hmm. The warm cloak of the Yeti I have in my possession. Uh, that's right. I need to what items I've given you. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. You, um, you, 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 you start walking through through, through the forest, and the, and um, the wind is swirling a bit as a, as a few flurries of snow get kicked up as you as you're trudging through through the forest. Um, you're walking for um, quite some time. Uh, as 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 you're as you're as you're moving through through the forest, you do hear the sounds of of other of, of, of other creatures moving around, and you look around, and a few times you see a wolf or two just sort of poking their heads out from from, from behind a tree. Uh, they kind of they kind of see the group of you, and they and they quickly m- m- move away, um, not posing any serious danger to you. Um, you're you're walking back through through, through the forest um, for close to two hours. Uh, when eventually uh, the trees begin to thin out in front of you and you can see uh, that you appear to be um, breaking out onto onto a path of sorts, like a road. And as you, as, as you step out of the tree line um, toward the road itself, uh, you can see that um, there look to be very fresh sled tracks moving through it. When you say sled, like a small toboggan or like a like a horse-drawn sleigh, like a like, like a dog sled, like a dog sled. Right, I think we need to pick up the pace anyway, don't we? Um, well, now we can. Yes, now we're on a bit of a path of sorts. Yes, and uh, by using the putting feet in the tracks that. Will presumably make going a little bit easier as well. Uh, yes, it, yes, it will. So the snow's been flattened. The snow has been flattened. Yes. Yes, we're going to catch up with Nadia. We definitely need to, you know, get going. Crack on. Mm. All right. Uh, you continue uh, sort of follow, fo- following the path this time. Uh, that, that is slowly winding its way towards the Pale Tower, and. Using these tracks as a guide, you begin to you, you begin to walk along along the road, um, and after another hour or so of walking, um, you crest a small rise, and you can see um, still st- still maybe about a mile ahead of you in the distance, but elevated on 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 the mountainside uh, in front of you, uh, you can see um, that. There is. What's my description? Uh, yeah. Um, as as uh, as you break over this crest, um, a sharp wind uh, sort of blows across across your face across your faces. It's, it stings your eyes with a little blast of of, uh, of of snow spray and stuff. And about a mile in the distance, you can see that there's looks to be uh, a, a great tower built of frozen ice rising in the distance. Um, Quite, it's quite an imposing sight. You gather that this this place must have quite the view of the surrounding area. Um, it's crowned with icicles that spear into the sky, and um, even from this distance, you can see that there is an unbroken circular wall uh, of ice guarding its base. What would you like to do? I think we're too late to intercept Nadja en route. That's an interesting structure, I think. It must. It must never get warm around here. Or, or just a thought. There's magic involved. Ah, yes, of course. Maybe I don't Maybe. know. Maybe is it magical? Uh, you can tell if it's magical, can't you? Yes, I can detect magic. Uh, you cast detect magic. Uh, detect magic has a range of sixty feet. The tower is still close to a mile away. You do not know if the tower is magical. How badly do we want to know? Uh, well, we need to go there. We need well, to go. Ah, ah, if, right, if it's a mile away, then possibly there might be a chance of intercepting Nadia before she gets there. So. Is, is there a mile? Is it a mile off our route, or is it on our on our route? No, we're going to the Pale Tower to to get Nadia. Oh, yes. that is the Pale Tower. We just did not know it was made of ice. 
But that would make it very pale. Uh, it would. It's a whiter shade of pale. Oh, yes. So we skip the light fandango and hot foot it. <coughs> so you want me to turn cartwheels across the floor? Yeah, let's stop there before we infringe copyrights. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're okay with an inflaming political opinion, but uh, mm. we draw a line of copyright, <laughs> yeah, exactly. copyright infringement. And that was a band that also wore uh, cloaks. Mm. Yeah. Indeed. Tweet us, Procol Harum. <laughs> I, I think they're... Are they still in the middle of their legal dispute? I have no idea. Mm. Over, over who who had the rights to what to share the pale. Surprise, so surprise you, guys you, have, you guys have crested this little rise and you can see the tower uh, about a mile in front of you. What would you like to do? Can we see any figures approaching the tower in the distance? Uh, you can give me a perception roll, Owen. Okay. Twenty-three. Oh, very perceptive. Uh, as as you Could sort of glance been. over over this this road toward the tower, um, you do not see any individuals approaching the tower. No. Well, maybe Nadia is either already there or she's somewhere out of sight on the way. It is a mile. There could be there could be dead ground between here and there. What looks flat could actually be a dip. Well, I think yeah. we just go up to it, knock on the door, and ask for our Nadia back. That sounds like a brilliant plan that cannot possibly fail. Yes, yes let us do that. Agreed. <laughs> okay, so you're, you're you're continuing just towards the Pale Tower pace. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, and you do so, uh, sort of trudging through th through the snow once again, following these these sled tracks uh, that do seem to be leading um, in the direction of of the Pale Tower itself. And um, after a little bit more walking, uh, you come to well, you come you come to sort of within a hundred feet of the outside wall of the tower. You can, you can see that the, that the path you're on um, continue it continues past the tower, but it also breaks off and uh, bends towards the wall itself. And the uh, the sled tracks you've been following uh, do seem to seem to go in, in towards the tower itself. Um, you can you can see from here that the walls of this, the outer walls that you're looking at, they're about 25 feet high, um, and you can see a couple of figures sort of um, manning manning the top. It seems patrolling around around uh, around around uh, around the top of the wall. And uh, okay. now now you've gotten a bit closer, you can see that toward the top of the tower. Um, there is a gash in the tower's bowl-like crown uh, that is split by a massive plane of ice and somewhat resembles an inverted crescent moon. Hmm. Sorry, I'm trying to think which way up a crescent moon would normally be. Um. Uh, the, the, uh, upright. Upright. Hmm. Um. So... Well, shall we just knock on the door? Is is there is there a door or a, a, a gate? gate or um, there? There's not what looks to be a traditional gate of sorts. Although you do sort of see um, using using the tracks of the footprints and, and, and the sled trails, uh, you see that, that it ends. Uh, uh, these trails end abruptly uh, at uh, at this wall of ice itself. Ah, perhaps there is an illusion involved. Yes. Well, now we're a bit closer. Are, are we within 60 feet? Um, you can get to be a little bit closer if you want. Yeah, maybe now is a good time for your wiggly wiggly... Yes, are, are, there, are there sentries on the top of the wall reacting to our arrival at all? Um, they seem to have noticed you and they're just standing ready. They, um, they seem to be waiting to see if you're going to get closer before they bother talking to you. Ah, we should we wave to them? Smile and wave, boys. Smile and wave. Smile and wave. <laughs> <laughs> shall yes. we hail them? Shall we hail? Good day to you. Uh, um, no, let's just go towards the. Let, let's look like we we we're supposed to be here, like we own the place. Yes, well, we would agree to say good to, good day to you. Good to, good to see you again. 
It's been a while. Are you are you are you, are you saying this also as you walk? Away? Yes, I'll say that to them. <laughs> um, you sort of step forward and, and you call this out, and the guards on the gate um, sort of look down towards you, and they say, <laughs> "Sorry, friend, I don't recall your face." Oh, are, are you new here? Perhaps. What's your business, the tower? Um, oh, it is a, it is a, a confidential matter, I think. So we, um, well, what shall we tell him? It is a matter of great import. Oh, yes, a and, matter of great import. Yes, and um, discretion. All right, what might that be? Well, wouldn't be very discreet if we told you, would it? Uh, we need to tell your master... What's his name again? Anyone? No. Yes, we need oh. to tell your master. In person. Sort of thing. Sorry, who... Who who, who do you say you're, you're here to see? Your master. My master? What yes. do you think I am, a dog? Well, all right. Your, your, your lord, then. Your, his lordship. We're here to see his lordship. Ah, these fucking country bumpkins. Are you here to see Radisek? Oh, yes, Radisek, yes. Yes. Strange, I wasn't told he was expecting no one. Oh, he's not expecting us, no. We're, we're here um, sort of impromptu, but uh, with, with news of great import for him. Yes, He'll yes. be very, very glad to to see us and, and get this discreet news. Or, or we could make an appointment now, if that's uh, if that's uh, well. No, it's, it's a bit so. urgent. It's a bit urgent for an appointment. Yes. You don't make an appointment at the, at the Pale Tower. Radisek will summon you if he wants to see you. Well, there you are. You see, he, he did not share it with you. So, well, he, he wants to see us. He just doesn't know that he wants to see us yet. But he'll want he'll, he'll want to see us once he's seen us. Mm. <sighs> All right, tell. Tell me what this is about, and I'll see if he's, if 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 he'll, if if he'll take you. This is a matter of great import. Yes, a you keep saying that. For you well, keep it's a saying matter. that, but you're giving me nothing to go on here. What's making it so important? Well, it's 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 it, it, all right. It's it's about the the um, the murderers in uh, the town of Waldby, the ones who killed half the watch. Oh, why? Yes, it's about them. We know where Radisek can find them, but you know it's like it's it's quite time sensitive. Give me a diplomacy roll, Owen. Where's my diplomacy? Ooh, eighteen. Right. Right. Uh, what did you say your your name was there? I'm I'm. I'm Bolin. 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 All yes. right. This is Merlo, my faithful, my faithful hound. Bolin, Merlo. All right. I'm Colin. You're uh, you're awfully well armed there for uh, for folk from Waldby, aren't you? Well, you cannot oh. be too careful. Yes, we're not from Waldby originally. You, you can probably tell we're a bit we're a bit tanned for Walby and, and mm. we don't we right don't look like Walby folk. So if you, if you're not from Walsby, where are you from? Well, Here all, and all there, over, really. There, yeah, I, I did mention this time sensitive, didn't I? If you've delayed us getting this information to Radisek and Radisek misses these people as a result of you delaying us, I don't think he'd be very pleased with you. Do you? I'm going to go check something. Ask Radisek if he'll see you. Stefan, watch the gate. And Hello, Stefan. One of the guards um, sort of steps up to the gate itself, and, and the uh, the guy you've been talking to uh, sort of steps uh, steps out of your sight, uh, disappears below the battlements. Um, and you are waiting uh, for... Um, a couple of minutes, uh, Alwyn. Um, but eventually, you do hear the sounds of footsteps crunching on snow, and um, 
this individual reappears at at the top of the battlements. All right, you're in luck. Radix Six got some time free bowling. <clears throat> but he's lucky for he's him. He's going bowling. <laughs> oh no, that's me. Yes. <laughs> Yes, good. All right. Follow me. And um, you watch as he presses something out of sight on the battlements, and this wall of ice that, that that's blocking your your, your entrance um, slides downwards and uh, um, and reveals the courtyard beyond. And you find yourselves in um, looks to be a circular courtyard of sorts. Uh, around the outside of the courtyard, uh, there are six squat wooden buildings uh, that all seem to have um, all seem to have dog sleds uh, sort of parked outside them. And you, you can hear you can hear the sounds of um, of dogs barking uh, within 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 these chambers. Um, dominating the courtyard itself, right in the centre, there is. Um, a large statue of what looks to be a white dragon, just sort of leer, le- leering over the courtyard as as uh, as you enter. Oh, I've seen some impressive ice sculptures in my time, but that one's really good. Yes. So we um so, so chaps chaps we're we're in now, but um we ought to come up with a plan. Um, I'm shit out of ideas. Hurry up! I can't keep this open all day, and Radisek don't like to be kept waiting. Oh, well, let's yeah, go, yes. let's go, let's right, go let's, see Radisek let's, and let's, uh, put our cards on the table, as it were. Okay, I'll let I'll let one of you chaps do the talking then. All right, um, uh, yeah, head on in. All let's right. all go in. Uh, you step forward into into. Um, uh, into the tower courtyard, uh, you watch as two guards from from the top of the walls uh, sort of come walking down uh, to to escort you in. One, one one of them being Stefan, and one of them being uh, the individual who you were you were talking to originally. Uh, you, you you do see that there there's been there, there's a couple of others that have been left um, on the wall itself. Uh, just obviously just to keep maintaining stuff, and and they they lead you across the courtyard um, towards. Uh, the best way I can describe it is a portcullis made of icicles. Uh, it kind of meshes together from from the top and the bottom. And as as these two guards approach it, um, uh, the icicle walls um, separate and and they open upwards. Oh, and you are you are led inside the pale tower properly. Um, the first thing you notice as, as you enter the Pale Tower is that um, it's considering this entire structure is, is made of ice. Uh, it feels mm. pleasantly warm inside. Not 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 sort of super hot, but it's certainly not cold by by, by any means. Like um, inside an igloo can be nice and warm. Yes, that 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 sort of that sort of thing. So uh, we do we we don't we probably don't want to tell anyone that we're here to shut down the winter portal. Because then they'll be left without a tower. I assume that uh, they, they rely on a long, cold winter to build something like this. What's that chatter? Oh, nothing, nothing. I was just saying, um, winter must last a very long time around here, these parts if you can uh, build such a structure from ice. <laughs> You're really not from here, are you? No, no, I am from uh, warmer climes. Oh. I, I really appreciate the ice. The, the only thing that's missing is maybe. Uh, some lemon, some tonic, and, and maybe some gin. Well, far, well, foreigner. Welcome to Irison, land of eternal winter. Clues in the name. Thank you very much. Mm. It's very not very nice welcome. Thank you. Um, you are led into into the tower itself, and as as you do so, uh, this icy portcullis uh, sort of slides shut uh, behind you as you do so, um, and. You, um, you, you, you are led into a wide, op- a wide open area. Um, 
in the centre of which you see there are six looks to be pillars of ice uh, leading from from the floor to the ceiling, and you can see water um, sort of being moved around uh, inside inside the these pillars. And within these six pillars of ice, uh, there, there there looks to be um, a steaming uh, a steaming body of water, um, like a like a small a small like a, like, a, like a water feature in the centre of the chamber uh, that. Um, uh, as noted, it seems to have a, have a lot of steam right, gen gently drifting off of it. Could this be the uh, the, the, the cauldron? cauldron? Is this called? The, do you call this the cauldron? Cauldron? No. The cauldron. Yes. We would call where I'm from. We call such a thing a cauldron. <laughs> well, I can see you're from strange places. Right. Yes. Um, well, so, what would you call a cauldron then? Wait. Uh, he 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 doesn't respond to that question. Also, hmm. um, he sort of says, "Right, well, make yourselves comfortable. Rather, right sec, I'll see you in just a second. You're most kind. Okay, I'll, I'll have a martini then, if we're going to be getting hmm. comfortable. So that that's not the cauldron that we that's have to throw the mask yeah. and the hair into. Yes, Shh. yes." Uh, as and as 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 you step a bit further into this chamber, um, you can see that there are um, there are four large mirrors uh, arranged around around the chamber itself. Um, uh, what what is curious is that there there seem to be other areas of of this chamber to the north and south uh, that are both that that are both being closed off uh, by more of these of these guardsmen. What would you like to do? Gosh. I don't think there's much we can do. <laughs> Shall we wait for Radisek? Uh, yeah. Yes. Wait for Radisek, okay. Wait, wait um, for radishes. Wait for radishes, all right. Um, uh, yeah, you... Um, you're waiting there for for a couple of minutes. It becomes becomes a little bit awkward uh, as as you're doing so. Um, you do notice that the two guards who led you in uh, are also kind of stood by uh, this icy portcullis, um, seemingly preventing you from from moving from moving back out into the courtyard. Uh, but you're waiting for a few minutes, and uh, after. After this this sort of slow awkward wait, um, a door on the opposite side of the chamber opens, and you see striding out, um, you see a woman uh, clad in uh, the same heavy chain mail as uh, as the rest of these guardsmen. She carries uh, she carries a long sword at her side, um, as well as a shield, um, and uh, she sort of looks up looks up at you and she says. All right. Are you? Uh, you are our visitors, are you not? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. All right. And she 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 reaches into her pocket and she slips out um, a mirror, about the same size as the one that you saw uh, Sergeant Satani using um, in in Waldsby. And she she speaks into it. Radasek. Um, and a moment passes, and you hear um, a, a, whis a half-whispered reply. What is it, Doltsev? Right a sec, I've got um, these folks here who are... That's the wrong voice. I've got these folks here who say they're here to see you. Uh, they are in the, the lower floor now, if you'd care to make an appearance. Yes, of course. One moment. She pops the mirror back into into her into her into her cloak, um, and just sort of sets, stand, stands there, um, at, almost at the ready. <clears throat> and, the, and the three of you watch a moment later as the four large mirrors that are arranged around the around the room uh, begin to shimmer um, with a strange coalescence uh, that. Shimmers, they, sh they they shimmer, and coming into view, you see the form of what looks to be a human male on all four of these of these mirrors. Um, 
this individual is uh, dressed um, from head to toe in quite quite fine looking cloaks and all that sort of thing. He's, he seems to wear uh, a black um, a black robe over over a purple purplish undercoat, and the whole thing is covered up with um, a deep blue cloak with furred shoulders and arms. Um, the face is very sharp. It's very sharp and angular. Doesn't actually look that different from the kind of people you're you're used to seeing in in Toldor in terms of their re- his regional look and stuff. Uh, his, his long brown hair cascades past his face, and um, a, gr- a goatee uh, frames his mouth. And uh, he looks up at you as he as he finishes appearing, and he says, "Welcome to the Pale Tower." My guests, I hear you've something to tell me. Uh, yes, that is true. Who's going to tell him? Uh, <clears throat> Hello! Good start. <laughs> go, on, go on, go on. Good, good day to you. Yes, hello there. Who do I have the pleasure of speaking with? Uh, my name is Otto von Niederschläger. I, I am a friend. Oh, the real names. Okay, I'm Alwyn Templeton. This is Chardonnay. Well, no, I just couldn't think of a made-up name. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I just blurted it out. I was going to lie, but... Uh, Alwyn Templeton, and you are? Brother Amos. Brother Amos. Well, Otto, Alwyn, and Amos. And Chardonnay. What brings you to my tower? Uh, A matter of... um, A delicate matter... What is this delicate matter? Come, come. I don't have all day. Your car's brought in a friend of ours, um, Nadja, um, who, poor woman, she's just trying to, you know, do the best she can. She's trying to do the right thing by everyone. Um, And your car's have pulled her in and and her children need her back. That they do. So we've come to... um, We've come to... um, to get her, I suppose. And clear up any misunderstandings. Yes, there's a lot of misunderstandings yeah, a lot going of misunderstandings. about, it seems. I'm sure you're a much more reasonable person than the others we've been dealing with so far. You're, what about it? Over the bloody head with a metal bar. I see. Well, you say it's Nadia you've come here for, is that correct? Yes. It's most curious. She's not. She She's not been here longer than perhaps two hours. You're so, 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 uh, so efficient, you might say. Well, we, yes. we, we, we did rush. We did hurry. Yes. Very yes. well. You seek the release of Nadia. What will you offer me in return? What do you want? I, I, sorry, what is, uh, will uh, you uh, offer? A hostage taker. Is it's that no. what it is? is? Is this a hostage negotiation? It's nothing of the sort. It sounds like the sort. But you've got someone. And I'm you're convinced saying you won't that Nadia has information about something. an important matter that I'm dealing with myself. Sergeant Satani, rest <clears> in peace, <throat> has sent her to me because he could not discern it himself. Therefore, that has fallen to me to find out. Well... If she says she doesn't know, then she doesn't know, does she? I mean, you know, she's not exactly a dishonest person. Do you know something, Olwyn? Not much, but do go on. People are... People often don't realise how much they know. You just have to ask them in the right ways. Yes, I've, I have found this to be true as well. So you're saying this this Sergeant Satan person... Um, who we don't know at all um, really wasn't asking the right questions so you know you've got to look at the person who employed him really you know and and look at where the competence lies there I find this very curious three foreigners 
appear in the town of Waldsby. Three foreigners kill my guardsmen. Oh, yes, we heard about that, yes. No, three, for- three foreigners appear in Irison. And now three foreigners appear at my tower. Okay. You can see why I might be suspicious of you. So, in these reports of these people being killed, uh, was there any mention of any of them having a wolf? There were not. Well, here we are. I've got a obviously, you know. I mean, look at look at his beautiful barding there. You know, clearly a very well looked after wolf. I wouldn't let him out of my sight. So I clearly, you're looking at somebody different. Uh, I have I think... eyes on this entire domain. I assure you, there are not that many foreign influences wandering around Irison. At least not this part of it. I'm sure there aren't. The way we've been treated. Yes. Hmm. I'm not surprised. Now, I've, I've, I've an offer for you. You say you want the release of Nadia. Yes. Y- yes, yes, and we'd like to have a look at your cauldron as well. That's why don't you tell me where the Black Rider is hiding? I, I don't know who you uh, mean. The Black Rider? No, I don't. I don't appreciate it when people lie to me. Come now. You seek the release of your friend. I just seek to uh, gain some information that you possess. What makes you think we know anything about a Black Rider? I've had very detailed reports from people out in the field. Three individuals made unauthorized use of our winter portal. The the very same portal that the individual I am seeking disappeared through. I, 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 I find it hard to believe these things are coincidences. But there you are, you see we're on this side of the portal and the person you seek is on the other side of the portal, according to your information. Well, he could be anywhere. Well, he, he didn't share that information with us on his way through. So you did see him? No. Well, you must have done, or how hook, How could he not share information with you? Well, that's very, how he, very easily, I would think, <laughs> if he didn't see us. Yes. It's easy Sorry, to I, not share information when you don't see a person than it is when you see yes. a person. I tire of this charade. If you do not wish to uh, negotiate peacefully, we shall... Exactly what we're here to do, but yes. you're asking us a question, you know, we can't answer. Doltsev, these men are persons of interest. Your orders are to apprehend them and bring them to me. Bugger that. Mm. Uh, let's all roll perception, folks. Six. Eighteen. Hang on. How how do you roll six when your perception is seven? Oh, my perception is four. Is it? Yes. Wow. Okay. Uh, What was the roll for Amos? Eighteen. Twelve for for Alwyn. Twelve. Sorry, Otto, you've got um, a proficiency of five, plus your wisdom score is your perception. Oh, I've got a proficiency of three. Your proficiency goes up with your level. Are we so on level trained, three? We are, yes. Yeah. So if you're trained, are you trained in perception? Yes. So it's two for trained, plus your level... Plus wisdom. Wisdom is one. So I reckon your perception should be six then. 
Oh, mine, mine still comes to four for me. Two for trained. Plus three for oh, level for is tra- five. Oh, right, then two, uh, then six. <laughs> plus wisdom. Yeah, so, oh, yeah. eight. My perception is eight. All right. Uh, Olwyn, what's your dex? Uh, sorry, dip. no, that, ignore that, ignore that. What's your perception modifier? Uh, seven. Seven, okay. So, um, acting first uh, is actually going to be Brother Amos. Uh, Brother Amos, as um, Radasek uh, sort of calls out um, this to to the sergeant, you see uh, kind of her hand goes to her weapon, uh, as does uh, the wep- as do the hands of all the all, all the guardsmen in this chamber. What would you like to do? How, how many guardsmen are there in the chamber? Um, there are six uh, plus plus the sergeant. Six plus sergeant. I think this fight is unavoidable. It's, it's always avoidable. It's never avoidable. It's always. Oh dear. Hmm. <clears throat> I mean, it, is violence really necessary? Well, if you're saying you'll come quietly, throw down your arms and lie on the ground with, with, with your hands on your head. Mm. Alwyn, what do you think? Uh, do you want me to wait till my turn to interact? Um, I'll let you. I'll let you reply. I don't think it's right that we should be arrested. We won't be. I don't think we should kill people either. Really? Because I think it's a choice between the two. <laughs> yeah. Non-lethal. Arrested or we kill everyone. <coughs> that's, Non-lethal. That, Non-lethal. That's, that, that's going to be the scope of your interaction there. Yeah. What are you doing, Brother Amos? <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I, don't, I don't want to be arrested. I'm not coming quietly. I'm not laying down my arms. I'm not getting on the floor. I'm not putting my hands behind my back. Right. Uh, are you using your turn just to say that, or are you doing yeah, anything? Yeah, I'm just saying that. I, I'm... All right. Uh, we move around to um, the uh, the sergeant. Um. Uh, you see, she uh, she she lifts up her hand and she just does does like a little flick with two fingers towards you. Um, she draws her own her own weapon, of, a weapon you're familiar with, Alwyn. Uh, there's a you see she she takes out um, looks to be a long bar of metal that's been wrapped in leather. You recognise this as a sap, and she moves in the direction of the four of you. Um, just so I've got it right in my head uh, who who would have been the first through the door I don't really know I haven't thought it through um, well okay we'll say that, oh, we'll say that Olwyn, Olwyn and Brother Ramos were at the front uh, Otto behind them and Chardonnay behind Olwyn sound okay. good? okay so I, sh- I sh- should have asked really I do apologise uh, yeah, you um, probably didn't expect us to take on twice as many people as what we are. <coughs> well, you have to expect the unexpected in, uh, in this you game. Do, you you know you're you're doing in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, we are we are round to Alwyn. Okay. Uh, so. I would like to tell Chardonnay to guard Otto. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I would like to draw the rapier. And I 
I have one action left, don't I? Uh, yes. How far away is this sergeant? Um, she's within five feet of Brother Amos, and you're next to Brother Amos. So she's can ten feet I, away from you. Can I move so that I am the other side of her to Brother Amos? Basically, like a flanking position. Um, let me just see. So, so, so to do so, you'll need to climb through uh, this this pool of water. Unless, unless you wish to move through Brother Ramos. Um, you, you don't mind me moving through your square, do you, Brother Ramos? No. Yeah, that's fine. Not yeah, at all. I'll do that. Right. Uh, so you start moving. Squeeze through. Uh, you, you sort, you, you sort of push past Brother Ramos, Orwin. Uh, and as you go to move into that flanking position, uh, the sergeant lashes out at you with with this stab. She uses her attack of opportunity. Yeah. Bugger. Uh, I've got a 27 to hit. Ooh, yeah, that's a hit. All right. Uh, you take... Um, Uh, yeah, so uh, as as you move past her, she cracks you kind of almost on the knees with uh, with the sap. Uh, you take five points of bludgeoning damage, Owen. Okay. Ow! Uh, but you are you are now on on the other side of her. Bloody people with your bloody metal bars. Hmm. That would be my three goes. Uh, oh, of course it will. Sorry, I, I uh, forgot you just. I mean, what? So yeah, so Chardonnay is just guarded. It, it, does that count as a readied action for Chardonnay? That was what I was thinking it was going to be. Um, I'm assuming you're telling Chardonnay to ready. So if if anyone other than you comes within within range, you'll get him to bite. Yes. Sure. Yes. That's fine. Uh, we are round to. Uh, the guardsmen themselves uh, the two guardsmen on your right hand side uh, they move up uh, one of them does come within range of Chardonnay okay. so you can make that attack uh, a 16 oh, 16 is exactly what you need to hit these guys with their, with their shields down Excellent. Uh, five points of damage. Okay, so Chardonnay lashes out and uh, sort of gets under the armour of this individual. Um, the individual that moved up is going to take a swing at Brother Ramos. Uh, 11 to hit. No, 19. He's going to try again. Uh, and that is a that, that's also a miss. That's an eighteen. Okay. Um, his companion is going to take two swings at Chardonnay. Uh, I've got a sixteen and a nineteen. Oh, the nineteen hits, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, bad damage roll though. Chardonnay takes three points of bludgeoning damage as uh, he's cracked by this uh, this this this. Uh, this metal bar. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, the two on the other side, on the left-hand side, they also move up. Uh, you see one of them moves into position kind of next to Sergeant Doltsev. The other moves up towards Otto. Uh, got a swing towards both of you. Uh, 18 against you, Alwyn. Nope, 18 doesn't. Okay. And a 22 against you, Orwin. Yes, 22 does. Uh, you take a further six points of bludgeoning damage. Ow! And against Otto, I've got a 12 and a 9. No, they don't hit. Okay, uh, so this, this, this flurry of attacks comes in. Um, they miss under they underestimate how 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 diminutive in size you are, are Otto, and they, <laughs> they sort of swing past. And lastly, the two that that were guarding by the door, uh, they also move up, and we're going to get two attacks 
uh, towards Otto and towards Chardonnay. So 24 against Otto. Yeah, that hits. Uh, and a 9, that's a miss. Uh, so you suffer 8 points of bludgeoning damage. Liberating step. All right, uh, so that's six points of bludgeoning damage. What, what's the resistance? I can't remember. It's been a while. Uh, it's two. Sorry, I've got it up. Uh, it is two plus my level, so uh, resistance of five. Okay, uh, so that's f- uh, three. three points of bludgeoning damage. Also, thank you. I appreciate it. You're okay. welcome. Uh, and then towards Chardonnay, I've got a 23 and a 20. Both hit, unfortunately. Yeah, Chardonnay is having a tough old time of it. Yeah. Chardonnay takes uh, 13 points of bludgeoning damage in total. Ooh. Uh, but that ends their turn. We are round to Otto. I think this will be a good time to take animal form. Shark, shark, shark. <laughs> <laughs> There is a puddle of water. There is a puddle of water, (laughs) yes. Uh, But I think I'll go for snake. Snake seems to work well for me. Okay, you transform. As uh, as you sort of take these blows, they rain onto you. Mm. Um, The last hit sort of knocks you to the ground a bit. And uh, as you fall to the ground, uh, you turn into a snake, Otto. Uh, Beautiful black and gold snake. Black and gold snake. Um... But we are... I think you've got an action left there, haven't you? Uh, can I attack um, the, the person who hit me? Uh, yeah, you definitely can. Right, what do I need to do? At a speed of 20 feet of climb. Um, so they're, 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 they're right up against you, so you don't need to move. Right. So damage is 2d4 piercing plus 1d6 poison. Okay, you've got to roll to hit first. Right. It's the score plus... Um... Uh, so, there should be some stats for the snake itself within the spell, which should include an attack modifier. Um... AC equals 16 plus your level. Yeah, one or more on our melee attacks, uh, you're trained with them. Your attack modifier is plus nine. So you're adding plus, plus nine. nine. In that case, it's 15. 15 uh, is not quite enough to hit Otto. As you lash out, uh, this mm. individual uh, sort of gets gets the sap just kind of on, on, your, on your body and just pushes you away from him. All right. All right, end of your turn. Mm. Mm. We are back round to Brother Ramos. Um, who's, is it the sergeant that's nearest to me? Um, the sergeant... So you've you've got three of them uh, kind of within your reach. The, the sergeant is one of them. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to use a flurry of blows against the sergeant. All right. We're flanking now with the sergeant, aren't we? Uh, yes, you are. Sixteen. Sixteen oh, is a miss. You, you, your fist thuds onto the, onto the chainmail she's wearing. Twenty-three. Twenty-three will hit. Roll damage. Mm. Two. Two points of damage. Plus your strength. Oh, five. Yeah. Lovely stuff. Uh, two actions left. Uh, <clears throat> I'll strike again. Okay. Um, using my powerful fist. That's 18. Uh, 18 again is a miss. Oh, actually, no. Which is flanked. 18 is a hit. Ah, okay. Seven points of damage. Seven points of damage. Two good strikes there from Brother Ramos. One action left. Mm -hmm. 
I'll, I'll just, I will strike again. All right, okay. 20. Is that with your multiple attack penalty? Uh, yeah, because it's, mi it's minus, is it minus four or eight now? It's m minus four for the second strike and minus eight for the second strike and beyond. Okay, so I've just rolled a natural 20. So. Oh, shit, okay. Um, Ooh. Hmm. All right, Crit card! Uh, so, what have you got? It's an unarmed strike. Oh, it's bludgeoning, isn't it? Oh, wow. Um, as as you drive your second fist, your your third strike in, Brother Ramos, um, your first one kind of works uh, her collarbone, where the arm is weak. The second one does the same, and the third, you crack her across the jaw. And as you do so, um, she sort of put, puts her hand up, just going, ah, ah. Um, she is stunned too from that strike. Good, good critical, good critical draw. Good work, brother Amos. Although that just came at us. Yeah. <laughs> Stop missing about. <laughs> All right. Um, end of your turn, brother Amos. We are now round to Sergeant Dulcev. Um, you see, she. She wo she wob she wobbles there, there there for a moment, just kind of getting, clearing her focus and getting 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 her, get yourself back. Um, she sort of settles into a defensive position, uh, looks over at the ally uh, next to her, um, and uh, says to him, "Watch my back, keep keep me covered." And um, they sort of almost settle into this same back to back manoeuvre that you saw Sergeant Sasani using. Uh, in the white weasel, um, they are for, for the time being. Uh, those creatures are both immune to flanking. Uh, and if that, that is all her turn, though, because she lost most of it. We're round to Orwin. Right? Is there a space? So, if I was to get Chardonnay uh, to attack the sergeant, is there a space where Chardonnay is next to both me and the sergeant? Um, not really. There's a. It's quite tightly packed. Okay. What about next to me and one of the guards? Um, Chardonnay could do that, uh, but there was um, to do to do so. He would have to move past uh, past sergeants. Then may or may not be an attack of what. Okay, I'm going to take the risk. Um, Chardonnay, Chardonnay, come here and attack that one. Um, so Chardonnay does uh, does move past. Um, as he does so, uh, Sergeant Dolcev does swing out towards Chardonnay with uh, her her sap. Uh, Thirteen to hit. Chardonnay is just a bit too quick. No, that's uh, nowhere near. Fantastic. Um, so Chardonnay will attack this this one guard that's. Everyone is near him. Uh, Hang on a second. No, uh, oh, no, sorry. Uh, oh. No, 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 it's fine. Ignore me. Ignore me. Okay. 11, anyway. Okay, 11 is a miss. It clanks off of her armour. Yeah. Um, Alwyn's second action. like to use Lay on Hands on Chardonnay. Okay. So Chardonnay gets 12 hit points back, and uh, AC is increased by two for one round. Okay, good to know. Okay, uh, and final action, I would like to use the rapier to disarm the sergeant. Okay, uh, so... That's an athletics check, right? Against her athletics DC. I'm going to be honest, I don't really know. <laughs> I don't use disarm very often. I hope, perhaps no, ought to. Um, that sounds right, if I'm totally honest. That sounds right. Uh, um, so yeah, make your, make your athletics roll. Yeah, athletics check against opponent's reflex DC. Against their reflex, okay. That's what it says, yeah. Reflex DC. Uh, it's only 11, however. Uh, so uh, 11, you might... 
uh, not be surprised to know is a failure. Unsurprised. Um, and once again, yeah. Yeah, but nothing, not a, nothing bad Nothing bad happens there, but it's okay. No. Not a critical failure, so I don't need to drop the rapier. That's correct. Rapier. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Um, is that your turn? That would be my three goes, yeah. Okay, uh, we're round to the Tower Guardsmen. Uh, so you see they sort of all um, cluster in a little bit, uh, some of them moving around around Otto. Uh, so, uh, Brother Amos, got three strikes coming against you first. Uh, oh, natural, tw natural 20. An 18 and a fifth, and uh, that's not 15, that's an 11. Uh, my AC is 19. Okay, so the natural 20 does hit. Uh, you take eight points of bludgeoning damage, Brother Ramos. No, okay. it doesn't, because of the liberating step. Yes, okay, you use your reaction to block that, that's fine. Three, three points then. Well, the eight. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Uh, two more strikes come in. I've got a nine and a five, that's going to miss. Uh, Otto, um, a flurry of strikes come toward you. Mm -hmm. Four will miss, six will miss. Uh, 18? No, that misses too. I have 19. 19, okay. Mm. Three will miss. Uh, 22 will hit though. Yes. Uh, four points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. Uh, the last one's going to make uh, three strikes at Brother Ramos. An 11, no. a 7, and a 9. Fuck me, rolling terribly right now. <laughs> Yay! Um, the two in front of you, sorry, the one in front of you next to Sergeant Arwin um, is going to make uh, he's going to make three strikes at yourself. I've got a 10, a natural 1, and a 16. Nope. All right, okay. <laughs> <sighs> what a great round from those guys. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, that's the end of their turn. We're round to Otto. Right, well, I, I will make a strike at the person who hit me, at the guard who hit me. Okay, roll that attack. So that is um, 26. 26 is a critical hit with their shield raised. Mm. With, sorry, with, with their shield down. 26, so uh, the damage is 2d4 piercing plus 1d6 poison. Yep, so 2d, 2d4... Um, then double it. Is eight. Uh, plus your plus your poison. Is two. Is two. Okay. And so you watch as as you lash out and inject this man in under under his armor. He sort of writhes out in pain. You see you, you see the poison pulsing through his veins. Uh, he collapses to the ground and starts convulsing. <laughs> Works a treat every time. Um, well, there was another one with him, wasn't there? I'll have a go at him now. Okay. All that attack. Oh, shit. I'll roll it again. If you can't hit the table, you can't <laughs> hit your enemies. Um, that's uh, 17. Uh, 17 will hit. Roll damage. Uh, four damage, four piercing damage, and uh, five poison damage. Five poison damage, nine points of damage. Once again, after bringing this first individual to the ground, you lash out and strike uh, the individual next to him. Uh, he he does manage to stay on his feet, though. Ah, oh, well, I will hit him mm -hmm. again then. All right, roll that attack. Is twelve. Uh, 12 this time will miss. He sees you winding up for, for the third strike and moves at the last second and, and you streak past him. Well, it's a start. All right. Um, and as, uh, as, uh, as, you, uh, as, you, uh, as you sort of bring this one guard to the ground uh, there, Otto, um, uh, yeah, it brings <coughs> us round to... Brings us around to Brother Amos. Um, I will strike 
with a flurry of blows at the sergeant again. Okay, roll your attacks. Twenty-four. Here's a hit. Uh, Eleven. No, fifteen. Sorry. Fifteen will miss. Uh, damage. Eight. Eight points of damage. Nice. And another sort of jab to, to the throat there. Two actions left. Uh, mm. Same again. Okay. Uh, you can't use flurry of blows more than uh, more than uh, last turn. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to use. Gotcha. A, my powerful fist. That's fine. Uh, misses. Okay, last action. Uh, same again. I don't really. No. Uh, that definitely misses two. All right. Uh, so you get you uh, sort of assaulting her, assaulting her armor. Um, you get you, you get a good strike in, but she takes the rest of it on her armor. And the last strike, uh, she sort of, she sort of steps around her ally, uh, who 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 sort of uses his body to to, to, to deflect you you, you aside. Um, she brings us around to the sergeant's turn. Um, you see, she sort of looks around at what's going on. Um, and so, sort of says, now why can't you criminals ever come quietly? Um, she takes out um, a similar looking whistle that you've seen Sergeant, Sergeant Satani use as well, um, pops it into her mouth and she blows on it. Um, a sharp, short, sharp blast on, on the whistle and she uses her last action uh, to raise her shield. Uh, but we will find out what happens from that next time, as that is where we're going to end tonight. Oh. <laughs> yeah, not lethal. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to punch a hole through anybody. Tales from the Twenty Side is a Fiegel Films production in association with Juicy Falls. Music by Nazar Ryback from hooksounds.com. Editing by Stu Jackson. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram by searching Tales from the Twenty Side or by visiting talesfromthe20side.com. <laughs>